notion, because constructivism is a philosophical school. He says, knowledge does not begin in the eye, and it does not begin in the object. It begins in the interactions. There's a reciprocal and simultaneous construction of the subject on the one hand and the object on the other. There is no structure apart from construction, either abstract or genetic. I really like that. I showed you some of the symbolic categories in a couple of you know, previous lectures. and I, I mentioned, for example, that one of the symbolic categories is the great father. And the great father kind of stands for cultural structure, whereas the great mother stands for novelty and, and, the, and, and sometimes the terrifying. Anyways, back to the great father. There's a precondition in constructivism that there has to be three things that exist. And they map right onto that symbolic structure. One is culture. So when you look at something, or really when any creature looks at something, there's an inbuilt structure that characterizes the creature, some of which would be biological, built in, and some of which would be acquired, that they must have in order to structure their perceptions of what they're looking at. So you don't come to the situation blank. You know, for, for example, you have two eyes, so you're going to have stereo vision most of the time. You know, and you have five senses, and they're the same senses. And, and there's more than that. You have snake detection circuits, for example, so you're sort of primed to respond to a certain class of predators. And you like sweet tastes and sour tastes, but you don't really like bitter tastes, and so on and so forth. Like, right from the beginning, you bring a landscape of interpretive structures in order to uh, frame and simplify the world that you are exposed to. Now, the world itself is this sort of amorphous thing. It's amorphous because it's so multidimensional and complex. There's so much of it. It's like a fog that contains everything. And so unless you can frame that and simplify it and narrow it, it's very difficult for you to understand and interact with it at all. I mean, you, you know, you just can't deal with everything at once. It's hard enough to deal with one little thing at a time. And, you know, this internal structure is partly what enables you to deal with one little thing at a time. And then, so there's you, and there's the, the source of all information. There's the structure of you and the source of all information. And then there's the, the process that's you. And the process that's you is you using your appendages, fundamentally, and your senses to interact with things and to make them manifest new properties, right? And so those are properties that they might not manifest without you there. And it's very difficult for you to tell when you're interacting with the world, even at a perceptual level, how much of what you observe wouldn't be there if you weren't there. Now, so because one of the big philosophical questions is, well, what's there when you're not there? And, and that is a much more complicated question than you might imagine. Um, the, the Taoists would say, well, what's there is so much an amalgam of everything at once that it might as well be nothing at all. And it's sort of a... I can give you a way of understanding that. So let's say you took every symphony that was ever written, recorded, okay? and then you took all those recordings together and you laid one on top of the other. And you'd say, well, now I've got like every symphony at once on a tape, and then you played the tape. What would it sound like? It would sound like white noise. It would sound like... And so you could say, white noise is functionally equivalent to every single symphony that's ever been written, every piece of music that's ever been written, all being played at once. Well, so what? You know, so and the Taoists would also say, you have to remember that what something is, is just as dependent on what it isn't, as it is dependent on what it is. So, that's a tough one, but it's very, very smart. So the constructivists would certainly agree with that. Now, Bruner who is a constructivist of sorts, put a little twist on Piaget's idea, which I'm going to borrow because I think it makes explaining Piaget easier, at least it makes it easier for me, and since I'm explaining it, that's, that's what we're going to have to go for. Bruner said, we seem to have no other way of describing lived time save in the form of a narrative. Now, the reason I think this is a Piagetian constructivist claim is because Piaget is concerned with knowledge as it emerges from action. And action is clearly represented in narratives, right? Because a narrative is about what the characters are doing. So narrative is the way that we represent information about doing. So, and knowledge for Piaget is about doing. So I just put the two together. And that, and that there's other reasons for it too. And that makes it simpler to explain. So, here's, here's a way of thinking about how we put 
put a structure on the world. So, and I've mentioned, I've, I kind of introduced you to this idea before. So, you're headed somewhere, wherever that happens to be, because you're an active organism. And so you're, you know, even if you don't have any immediate needs, you're going to poke about at things just because you're curious. Turns out that your dopaminergic system, which is the system that drives curiosity, fires at a certain constant rate, even if you're not hungry or tired or thirsty or, you know, even if no primary needs are clamoring for your attention. So your, your default comfortable state is mildly curious about everything. And so that's part of what makes you an information forager because when you have nothing better to do, so to speak, you'll just poke around and see what happens because you never know that knowledge might come in useful in the future. So anyways, you're always going from point A to point B because you're active. And the way you get from point A to point B, even if point B is an abstraction, because it often is, you know, I'm going towards a better future. Well, that's kind of a weird abstraction. How are you going to get there? Well, you can be sure that at the base it's going to involve movement, right? Because to get to that future, there's, there's movements you're going to have to make.